Good morning and welcome to the Community Culture Arts and Sports Committee number 10 for 2022. I recognise all of my uh, fellow committee members are in attendance this morning and I'd like to pass over to Councillor Kunzelman for the acknowledgement today. Thank you, Chair. Today this committee recognises the traditional custodians of this land on which we meet. We support their right to democratic representation and social inclusion. Ipswich City Council respectfully recognises the ongoing challenges faced by Aboriginal and Torres Strait, excuse me, Torres Strait Islander people, and this committee supports their inclusion and participation in community, cultural, arts and sports activities. We welcome Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people present here or online. Thanks, Councillor. Um, any members of committee with any declarations of interest? Moving on to the confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting and the recommendation here is that um, those minutes be confirmed. I'm happy to move and Councillor Kunzerman will second that. Are there any amendments or alterations? Um, that being the case, we'll take that to the vote. All those in favour? And that's unanimous and carried. Um, moving on to the second report uh, this morning, um, the Indigenous Accord 2020 to 2025 milestone report, um, October 2022. Um, do any members of committee wish to ask uh, questions of any relevant council officer? Um, okay, we might just um, note that, Mayor. Um, do you know... Um, which officer might best be able um, to answer your question? I was going to ask a question, Chair, of, of item in, in the Accord 1.7.1 in regards to Briggs Road Sporting Club. Okay, and while that happens in the background as to work out who the best person um, to answer that question might be with regards to Briggs Road, um, we've got um, a bit of a special um, presentation this morning um, at our committee um, it was actually suggested by the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Working Group um, that they make representations to our committee this morning to talk a little bit about the work um, that they've been doing and, um, uh, and how the group has grown and evolved, um, particularly in this last quarter and particularly within the last uh, few weeks. Um, so I would like to um, invite Damien uh, Beck and Cherie up to the lectern, um, just to come and uh, address the committee and talk about some of the wonderful work um, that you're doing in the employee working group, uh, which I think um, is really special and pretty important for us um, as a committee to hear about and to canvas this um, with the broader community. Uh, often um, at committee, we just get to read reports and talk to each other and ask questions of um, a branch manager or a general manager, or of course, the CEO. Um, and we get, um, I guess, caught up in the business of our committee rather than considering some of the awesome discrete projects that are happening uh, within the organisation. So I think that um, committee should be used in this way to share the good work that's happening in the organisation. So um, over to these really awesome members of the um, internal working group to just give us a little bit of a rundown on what's happening and um, how, how much the membership has increased since your involvement as well. Uh, good morning, Mayor, um, councillors and CEO, general managers. Um, I'm Damien Ture. Um, I work for IED um, uh, Streetscape slash Urban Greening. I drive a water truck. Um, and I'm part of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Working Group. And uh, I joined about probably f three or four months ago. Um, and yeah, it's, it's great. I've met a lot of nice people and um, yeah, it's, yeah, the progress. And I enjoy going to the meetings and talking about, you know, um, the agenda and certain issues and um, yeah, um, creating awareness and, you know, um, just, yeah, it's it's great, so, yeah. Um, I, th I think, Damien, you could probably speak to the increased number at the last meeting. How many new attendees did we actually have at that working group at the last meeting? Uh, there was 11, uh, I believe, uh, and they were all uh, field staff, field workers, so. 
11 additional members. Additional, yeah, on top of to, what we had prior to the last meeting. That's awesome. So word's getting out there. And um, how do you think that transpires? Is it the work that the members are doing to communicate that across the organisation? Are there particular champions that are showcasing the benefits and the opportunities that exist in that group? Most definitely, yeah. It's, um, it's definitely the members and just, you know, we have our uh, depot barbecues and stuff, which, um, you know, we all get together and talk and, and, and yeah, it's, um, you know, um, the last barbecue we had, we we all got together and um, just sort of rounded a few up and, and spoke about it and then, yeah, the meeting was the following week, so, <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the numbers showed. Awesome, that's great. Are yeah. there any particular projects um, that you're working at the moment that you'd like to share with us this morning? Um, yeah, so there's a few. Um, I'll... I'll let maybe let the ladies share um, a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Good morning, Mayor, Councillors, CEO. My name is Baptiste. I am a, a Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander employee working group member, and I currently work in the customer experience delivery officer role within council. Um, I have been a part of the working group since its inception in March of this year. Um, so I'm very proud to be part of an organisation that provides a culturally safe environment for our employees to uh, be able to come together and deliver on items that are, are important to our culture and to create an ongoing um, employment retention strategy within Council. Um, so that's one of our um, upcoming uh, items within the Accord is to promote uh, a culturally safe uh, employee and to and to uh, support that we have seven members going to the National Indigenous Leadership Summit in Sydney next week um, and we'll be accompanied by uh, one of our branch managers in IEG to further support that strategy and initiative. Oh, awesome, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Cherie. I am the bank rec officer within finance. Um, I'm part of the working group, which was established in March as well. Um, so, yeah, it's very exciting times in the working group that we get to actually be safe within our culture and express that, create that safe space that's available to us with starting, creating more jobs within council and everything like that. Um, also... Um, we're working with IED at the moment to have our Indigenous Accord artwork on some of the truck wraps to promote that council is creating this space for us. And also we've um, got new uniforms coming to staff as well. So we're creating outdoor workers staff uniforms as well as indoor as well. So just creating that conversation to start with. Yeah, they're awesome projects. Yeah. I'm really supportive of... Um, a bit of flourishing on the uniform. It brightens up everyone's day, I think. So it's a great initiative. And um, with the, such a, an amazing group, kind of driving that internally, I think, is a really important first step for the organisation. Um, so thanks for sharing this morning um, and thanks for taking time out of your day to come and address the committee. I think the work that the group is doing and we'll all agree is really important work and we've got to start somewhere. So here you are and um, hopefully that you've got a few of your friends online from the working group um, who are watching or you can share this with them as well and keep increasing those numbers and the visibility of the group and the organisation. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you very much. Um, so back to the question with regards to Briggs Road. Um, Don Stewart. Um, thank you, Mr Stewart. Morning, Don Stewart, Manager of Community Cultural Services. Thanks, Mr Stewart. Mayor. Thank you, Chair, if I can. Um, item 1.7.1 is Council continues to build and strengthen relationships with key stakeholders and users of the Briggs Road Sports Complex. And it does say the milestone is that we're continuing to work with them. Can you just provide a bit more detail on what that means and where sure. we're at? Uh, the Briggs Road Sporting Complex is actually under lease from the Cambu organisation. Uh, we have a, a five-year term remaining on that lease. Uh, 
you know, critical to that relationship is uh, maintaining an open and transparent engagement with that group to ensure that the facility is activated to the level that it should be. And is that happening? Yes, well, we, we just recently renewed that lease back in June. Yep. Uh, that was the last engagement that we did have with the Canberra organisation. Uh, I guess in, in terms of ongoing sort of smaller activations, we have held relevant uh, Torres Strait and Islander activations at the Briggs Road Sporting Complex. Like, for example, during NAIDOC week, uh, we have held those activations there. Um, I'm just going to have a bit of understanding the intent of, of because the property is with Cambu. Um, and what was the intent of that? Well, my understanding was for more local employment opportunities and skilling and things like that. Is that happening, do you think? Uh, Mayor, I'd have to take that under notice to, okay. to give you the specific details okay. surrounding that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Stewart. Thanks, Thank Mr you. Stewart. Any further questions from the committee? I do, but I don't know who to direct it to, Chair. I was just wanted to ask about um, the Accord Working Group. I know that's currently in recess. Um, just wondering when that's coming together again, because a number of items here are, are, are hinging on that particular uh, Accord Working Group. I'll call um, Kat Matson. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Kat Matson, Manager of Economic and Community Development. Sorry, Mayor, give me that question again. Yes, yeah, so item 10, uh, 1. 10 1.10.1, but there's a number of them, um, where the milestone or activity is about the, um, the Ipswich City Council Indigenous Accord Working Group is currently in recess and until the establishment of a traditional owner steering committee or similar before be reconnected. So I'm just wondering where that's at and when that'll happen. Sure. So we're currently in the process of scoping up a new role that will sit in the Economic and Community Development Branch. Working title, I don't want to commit to it right now, but the working title is a Principal Officer for First Nations Strategy and Policy. Once that role is in place, we will then be able to re-engage the formation, <laughs> the re-engage the formation of the right groups, including the Accord Advisory Group. So it's on pause while we're establishing that new role. Right. Um, will that be will that role be filled this year? Do you think it won't be filled before Christmas? Okay. Um, we're currently doing some extensive engagement to make sure that we have the scope of the role correct, okay. and that our recruitment plan is also appropriate to secure the right person for that role. I'm going to hope within the next six to nine months, but we are aware that it's a challenging role to get right. I guess noting that there's I haven't ticked everyone, but there's a number of. Um, initiatives and in, or actions in the accord that depend on that group, how will the organisation progress those items without that group there? Without, uh, it's a difficult question to answer in global terms and I don't have a copy of the report in front of me. However, the we continue to engage as appropriate with the right members of the Indigenous and First Nations community, whether it's through a formal group or whether it's through our more informal community forums. So we're confident that at the moment we can still progress a number of the action items. We are aware that there are policy actions that might still need to be on pause for a little okay. bit. Thank you. No worries. Thanks, Ms. Matson. No further questions. Does any member of committee have any further questions? Um, so the recommendation here is that uh, the report be received and its contents noted. I'm happy to move. I have a seconder for that one. Thank you, Councillor Jonick. Um, I'd now like to open that up for any discussion. If I may, Mayor. Chair. Um, I was really pleased to see, I think, item 2.2.1. Um, in looking at the milestone there, when it talks about the Council work with the Native Title Party to ensure Native Title and Cultural Heritage is protected, and one of those is that the establishment of a proposed Native Title and Cultural Heritage Advisory Group will assist with achieving this goal. I'm just looking at, you know, what we're doing with the, and the planning scheme from mm -hmm. our earlier mm -hmm. committee. I just thought it was really good to see that and, and be very keen to see how that progresses. Chair? Yeah, and I think, um, you know, we talk about um, how expansive, um, I guess, some of the aspirations of the Accord are. Um, every time we get um, our milestone report, um, and 
Um, one thing's for sure is that every single time we've had this report this year, um, we've seen some um, significant pieces of work and small projects um, getting off the ground. So there always seems to be um, a lot going on in this space. Um, we heard um, at the last report that people and culture uh, were kind of at the be beginning of their journey when it came to creating a safe um, working space um, and the work that the um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander internal working group has done to kind of foster that um, from a grassroots level within the organisation I think is um, extremely impressive um, and it's highlighted there as um, one of the three biggest um, achievements um, this in, within this report. Um, those who were in attendance at the Spark Festival would probably agree that the acknowledgement of country um, at the opening ceremony <laughs> down at the church was one of the most spectacular things that happened um, in the City Events program this whole year um, and probably will remain to be um, a standout for a lot of people in our community. So um, obviously we got behind NAIDOC Day. It changed venues and went to um, the Turf Club but huge attendances there as well. Um, so there's tons going on in this space and lots that we should be proud of. Um, and um, and I and I just I kind of st sit here every single time we get this report and say, hey, there's lots to be done. Yes, we can go through the accord and pick out the things um, you know that um, need to be done or, or haven't been actioned. But I think that the slow burn um, will will deliver great success for the organisation. I think, you know, and I, I don't want to put too much pressure on, on the um, employee working group, but I think the work that they do to inform the rest of the organisation is so vital and so important when it comes to um, recruitment, when it comes to ensuring that we, ha we have the positions available for First Nations people um, to gain employment with within the organisation, who better to inform that work than our First Nations peoples who are already working within the organisation. Um, it makes sense um, and it's a wonderful initiative. So um, I'd just like to say that. CEO, do you have a couple of words? Share with you, your indulgence just through, through your thought. It might be important just to add that um, while noting what, um, what Ms Matson said, it thought it worth mentioning that we... Uh, are working very hard to uh, Im continuously improve the relationship that we have with the recognised native title um, applicants, the Yugara, Yugarapal peoples. Uh, and uh, through um, one of our managers in particular, you, you, as you're aware, there's an ongoing relationship in relation to na native title clearances, but we're looking to build on that relationship and, and uh, the YUP um, applicants are, are actually meeting in this administration building now on a regular basis and, and um, uh, we're looking forward to, uh, with their permission, taking some time at their next meeting to discuss uh, one matter in particular um, and we'll look to build that, that going forward, recognising that there are, of course, a number of um, First Nations people that we need to continue to engage with depending on the item and the initiative. Mm. Uh, but I just thought worth mentioning that is just one important part of the work that we're doing. Awesome. Thanks Thank for you. the update. With no further discussion, we'll take that to the vote. All those in favour? And that's unanimous and carried. The celebrations continue with item number three, the Active Kids Program, September 2022 Eval. Um, does any member of committee have questions for the relevant officer? Councillor Johnny? Yep. Good morning. Um, Natalie Wormsley, Program Officer, Physical Activity. Thank you. Over to you, Councillor Johnny. Thank you. Um, just wanting to uh, ask the uh, how these uh, activities are kind of spread across our region, and if there is um, any room for improvement for for equity, if there needs to be, um, with a few different things happening, maybe in east or southeast, etc. And but wonderful. Um, Love, love, love it. 
um, love the feedback, love the growth, love the, the stick rate of people actually attending as well. Um, obviously, the difference in COVID is there, but yeah, you know, anything we can do to get our kids back into the outdoors and off devices, right? Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah, back to my question. Sorry, I'm rambling. Um, so could you repeat your question? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I've just noted uh, that there, there's a few things that are happening um, that are uh, kind of Ipswich focused on yeah. um, kind of CBD, I guess, uh, but then on the East End and Ripley and where our youth are um, living. I'm just thinking maybe there could be more or is that is it mapped like that? Uh, absolutely. So with this particular edition of Kids Go Wild, we were um, colleges crossing and um, a few other places were unavailable due to the flooding that we had earlier in the year. So we were fortunate enough to then have to think about other places that we could host these activities. So it is still in the early phases, um, given that this is the only third holidays that we have done this. Yeah. So we're always looking for places that are suitable. Uh, some of the activities do need to be specific. For example, canoeing, we can only, yeah. we're quite limited to where we can do those. But particularly for our bushwalks, uh, for example, we took one out to Denmark Hill to support that reactivation. And that was one of our most successful activities. So we are always looking. We definitely want to get further out to the Springfield area, particularly the Ripley area, considering its growth. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we are always looking for different locations that we can put these activities for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Um, I just had one question around sure. um, Council's marketing strategy when it comes to the promotion mm -hmm. um, of this particular um, initiative, um, but noting that um, we had quite a few of the events book out, you know, what what are some of those limitations? Um, you know, if we if we went really wild between now and and the next time we roll out this program, um, you know, do we have capacity built into the budget to actually deliver more if they become oversubscribed or if the popular ones I saw had a couple of wait lists. Um, do we have the ability to kind of, you know, take off some of the less um, popular ones and add additional dates for those ones that the kids are really enjoying? Yeah, so as mentioned, it is in the early stages. So we're always taking on feedback, always evaluating the ones that are successful. So, uh, in the last one, you would have seen that one of the higher cost activities was actually the least capacity mm. and the least attended. So we'll be reviewing that one and making sure that aligns and we can offer some more activities for example our canoeing which it just gets booked out within hours so it is very popular so in the current budget we don't have the capacity to put on more but it's definitely something that we'll be pushing for and looking forward to in the next financial year as well mm. okay cancel Sorry, Johnny. one more question then in relation to the funding is that possibility of bringing on sponsors perhaps to to yeah gain funding from to expand it as well, just thinking out loud. Uh, that's definitely something that we can consider. And we're very fortunate to have such a wide variety of suppliers and uh, interest in this program that I don't see any issue in pursuing that further. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Madsen. Um, I don't expect you to have this information <laughs> in your brain. I'm just curious if um, we have the data for um, where the individual kids are from just so that we can sort of review in terms of distribution of that? We don't at the moment. However, on a completely different note, we are reviewing our booking systems and the way that we go about that to hopefully yeah. capture that data. Because particularly we want to know if these kids are travelling from certain areas and if they are, then how do we centralise an activity in that area so that they don't have to travel? Um, yeah, so that's something that we are reviewing. We just don't have that answer right now. Yeah, and not much of a question, but if the chair will allow it, um, having been out at the Rec Reserve at Red Bank Plains a couple of times this week, there's some amazing council facilities happening there. So I'm um, happy for, to put that forward um, for any activities in the future. Right on. If I may, Chair? Of course, Thank yeah. Thank you. Um, just on page 37, um, 
we look at, look at the bookings and then the attendance rate at 52% and 55%. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions on what we can do to... Mayor, I'll bring your attention to the top of page 38. Oh, my apologies. In 22... Yes, I missed that line. So it's increased because of, probably because of, of COVID. Thank you. Um, I guess for me, just I was very impressed when I looked through attachment two, which is the active kids school. Actually, it's not a question. I'll make a comment during discussion. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thanks okay. so much. Thank yeah. you. Uh, the recommendation here is um, that the report be received and its contents noted. I'm happy to move that. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. Uh, I'll open that up for discussion and over to you, Mayor. So I was going to comment that I, I looked through our attachment too, which is the Active Kids School Holo Program for mm. September, October, and I was actually very impressed the fact that the activities were right across our, our city, um, you know, from... Brussels, Springfield Lakes, Rosewood, Ipswich, Springfield Central, Springfield Lakes, uh, Ripley, Black. So I just was very impressed with the um, with the spread at Red Bank uh, as well. Um, yeah, so I was going to just commend the organisation for um, for having that uh, good spread. Yeah. Um, I just yeah I, I want to highlight the importance of getting young people involved in physical activity early. Um, we know that prevention. Um, needs to be more heavily invested into than it presently is. Um, and local governments do have a role to play in this space um, when it comes to um, ensuring that the younger generations um, are healthy and active. We have some pretty terrible health outcomes across the city. So um, I'm really proud that this council invests in programs like this um, because it's one of those ones that, you know, in the broader context of the budget, for us, it wouldn't it wouldn't be too too much to say. Well, we would redivert the resources elsewhere. But the fact that we're sticking it out, we're seeing improvement in the attendees, we're seeing um, the marketing, you know, work, um, and you know, we're seeing um, particular activities uh, oversubscribed. So I think that um, you know, this is just one small piece of the puzzle, um, but a really important one for for us to be investing in. And um, you know, I'll be fighting for the continuation of budget to be spent um, in this way because, you know, al although health overwhelmingly is um, the responsibility of the state government, local governments absolutely have a huge role to play, um, particularly when setting the tone for the entire city. So programs like this kind of warm your heart as well. Through you, Chair. Um, just we were out at uh, Peter Tullett Memorial Park last week uh, in Spring Mountain and it leads on to the Spring Mountain Conservation Estate there, and it's a, a newish area, and it's just gorgeous. And um, just maybe if we could add a um, given a chance to give some of that feedback back to the team at some stage um, for the little like different pockets and different areas of our city, that would be good to hunt for drop bears at night time. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, and I know that we've got um, a broader discussion around some of the projects happening um, in this, um, you know, within the remit of this committee's um, portfolio of which you'll be in attendance with. So something that we can put on the agenda f to have a chat about in December to see how we can be more actively involved in this space and giving our feedback um, as the elected representatives. Uh, with no further discussion, we'll take that one to the vote. All those in favour? Uh, each unanimous and carried. Um, moving on to item number four uh, this morning, uh, which is our Community Funding and Support Allocation Status Report, 1 July to 30 September. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council? So, uh, noting that um, the recommendation here is that this report be received and its contents noted, I'm happy to move. Do I have someone to second that? Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. I'd like to open that up for any discussion. Over to you, Mayor. If I may, Chair. Um, it's, it's great to see our community putting forward these, these grants um, and great to see the evaluation. I note that a, a few of them, like the Ipswich uh, Community Youth Service, is getting $15,000 for a youth hub, uh, the Ipswich Pony Club, $15,000 for a safe arena fencing project, 
Um, the Rosewood Bowls Club with the kitchen upgrades. It's great to see our um, community put these grants in. I encourage any of the community groups and sporting groups to contact our grants office uh, for, for any support on how to uh, um, apply for a grant. Yep, certainly a good result. Um, nearly a quarter of a million dollars, just like that. Um, making making positive impact across the community though. And, you know, I think that we're starting to see the fruits of the realignment of our values and our strategic direction when it comes to administering this money through the new guidelines, um, you know, that we adopted earlier this year as well. Um, you know, money is, you know, sought after. There's going to be um, points in, you know, in our life here at council where these funding buckets are going to be oversubscribed. But that's a wonderful thing because then we've got, you know, the backing of, you know, our assessment panels to make sure that the money is being invested where we're going to maximise that community impact. And I think that's really important. And we can see in these projects here that we're going to be achieving that across the city another quarter. Um, with no further discussion, we'll take that to the vote. All those in favour, um, that's unanimous and carried. Our last one for committee today is uh, item number five, which is um, really another great news story, um, but we're not surprised because we always celebrate the wonderful things happening in our community within this committee. Um, so we've got the Ipswich Library Survey Report 2021 to 2022, um, which is um, a glowing review of the wonderful services that we provide uh, in our libraries. Does anyone wish to speak to the relevant council officer with, with regards to the report? No. Okay, well, yeah, again, this is just to be received and noted. I'll move. Um, do I have a seconder? Thanks, Councillor Kunzerman. Um, and we'll go straight into discussion um, with regards to the libraries. Yeah. Over Councillor Kunzman, you go first. This is something that's near and dear to your heart. Indeed it is. And what we see here is the community's endorsement of what we're doing. And I am delighted with these results and the continued work that our library puts into our community. And um, I know that from time to time residents say, uh, why should I have pay rates because I never use the library? <laughs> and uh, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to find an argument for that. But... Um, Nobody needs to convince me. Mayor, did you wish to? Um, if I may, Chair. Um, first, I want to thank the over 1,500 people who um, did respond to the survey. Uh, we are always actively going out there. It's a huge it is number. a bit disheartening when it's only a couple of hundred. So it's great to see 1,500 people take that time, to, and I really appreciate that. Uh, just a couple of observations on, on, on page four of it. Um, we know we have a, you know, a growing number of... Um, uh, we have a very multicultural uh, community. I'm just looking at how we can tap into that more and, and encourage them to attend the library. And one something that's probably dear to my heart is the opening hours is discussed. I know myself when our kids were... Our three kids were in school, where the biggest hindrance was the opening hours to the library. So I am um, keen to see if that is possible to, to be addressed as well. Um, it is one of the things that's, that is raised by residents that they would like to see extended library opening hours, especially and, on the weekend. And the um, the introduction of the children's library um, is nothing but praise. Um, yeah. We, you know, see it every day when we walk downstairs into the office. It's um, very well utilised space, um, full of rich programming that has high levels of engagement. Um, and it's just such a special place. I mean, it's the first of its kind um, in the country um, and we've proven that the model works um, and it's, really it, it's a really important spot uh, for our young families to bring their young kids now. I know that when you go, you know, when you walk into the children's library, um, you see that there are people who use it almost every single week. You know, it's something um, to do um, with young children. Um, so it's no surprise to me that the satisfaction levels are high, not only just in the children's library, but across our libraries, across the city, um, because the service there is is gold. Um, you know, we, we set the standard. Um, we had um, the we had Queensland libraries actually visit us earlier this year, and they were gobsmacked at how how beautiful, how functional. 
um, and how well utilised our spaces were. Um, you know, I guess uh, it's up to us to continue, you know, with our efforts to ensure that people are accessing those library services. I'm sure there are people out there in the community that don't presently, um, you know, access library services. But, um, you know, if had the opportunity, we'd absolutely take advantage of that as well. Um, I know that we've got a lot going on in this space with, you know, Red Bank Plains and you and Councillor Ireland, Councillor Madsen have been a big part of um, what's going on down there. Um, we've got the Red Bank Plaza Library. There's a little bit of a rejig that we're doing there um, and, and some money's being spent um, so that the goers of the shopping centre are actually able to access that facility through the shopping centre and we anticipate that that will bring greater visitation um, to the Red Bank Plaza Library yeah. too as well. I think, uh, Chair, um, it's very pleasing the services and the offerings that we have. It's, it's great to see. I also know, I think recently we went down to level two, but I wasn't aware of the, the home library service and how much that is, mm. particularly in aged care facilities and how well regarded that is. And I encourage people to, to utilise that if they can't get to their library as well. Yeah, and if you can't get to your library, I mean, it's probably a service that, um, you know, not many people are, are actually aware of, but our librarians work studiously to ensure that people have new things to read, even when they're homebound. Um, you know, and we have the experiment that was the Carolee Library Pod and quite a few naysayers out there on that one, just as there were on the ch Children's Library and we've proven them wrong time and time again. But the increase in usage at the um, Carolee Library Pod, um, I think, has increased to a point where it's actually becoming a little bit difficult for us to manage the return. So a, a really successful result out there and it's just, um, it plays into the convenience of, of having that service um, at the shopping centre. People pop in to do their shopping, they go down to visit Coles and they can hire out a library book and bring it back the next week. Um, it's kind of the ultimate convenience spot. Um, it's nowhere to, you know, sit down and nestle up with a book, but that's not the intention of that particular pilot project. So i um, really happy to see the success of the library pod um, continue as well. So uh, congratulations to everyone in the libraries team um, because th this this is just an amazing result. When you have this many people responding to a survey, that is a really high level engagement for us, um, but with such positivity too, um, you know, in the high 90s, um, you know, I challenge any of our neighbouring LGAs to provide a service um, as slick um, and as well loved as this. I, I did mean, sorry, uh, thank you, Chair. I did mean to mention um, and draw to the attention of the CEO the comments about the standard of the staff service. And of course, this has been my experience for 40 years or whatever. And so we applaud that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I was actually discussing, you know, in a meeting the other day that um, good old fashioned customer service has kind of disappeared. It's not what it used to be when you go to the grocery store anymore, but one place where you absolutely do get that service with a smile and a dedication to help you with whatever you want is in our libraries. People go out of their way to actually do that. So yeah, congratulations to the team through you, CEO. Mm. Thank you, Chair and, and Committee. A very, very passionate, committed um, and dedicated uh, library services teams right across the, the LGA. So, yep, thank you very much. Chair. Yes, Councillor Madsen. Um, having a moment to speak, um, I'd just like to address Ms Chandler and her team. Um, had a great little look um, ahead of some further works taking place at the Red Bank Plains Library. Um, the most important library in Ipswich in, in my regard. Um, I think it's amazing um, the work that they're doing there that's going to reopen the floor space, um, return of children's programming. Um, we'll have an extra meeting room available there, which is particularly critical given the status of the Red Bank Plains Community Centre um, being consistently full. Um, so the work that they're doing and the um, extra opportunities that we'll bring in for what is the most multicultural suburb in Ipswich Mayor um, is really beautiful and powerful and I think it's going to make a tremendous difference to the services on the ground in um, what is the largest suburb in Ipswich. Um, so I just wanted to thank them for all the work that they've put in because um, Councillor Island and I have certainly not been shy about getting it on the radar and getting those services in our community. And um, yeah, so I'm very proud of the branch and uh, what, they're, what they're doing there.
and I will be politely um, reminding all of my fellow committee members when it comes to budget discussion um, how glowing how glowing we were about these wonderful library services of ours. Um, so with um, no further discussion, I'll take that to the vote. All those in favour? And that's unanimous and carried. Um, with no notices of motion or matters arising, that brings our committee to a conclusion um, at three minutes past noon today. Um, the next committee will commence at 13 minutes past 12. Looking around, everyone seems happy with that.